Okay, so um, welcome to this next video in which we're discussing uh, nitric oxide synthases. So, uh, we've discussed the first stage of the reaction in order to generate nitric oxide, and we've discussed how the structure of the nitric oxide enzyme uh, relates to this function, i.e. how it's going to deliver these two electrons from the reduced NADP to the oxygen in order to reduce it, uh, to turn it to water, to make available another oxygen which is going to add in to the L-arginine to make NG-hydroxy-L-arginine. Now what's going to happen is that another reduced NADP molecule, so here comes our other reduced NADP molecule, is going to come and bind to this, uh, bind to this NADP binding site down here. It's going to, this time, only give one electron. This electron is going to move again to the flavin adenine dinucleotide, then to the flavin mononucleotide, uh, mononucleotide, which is bound to this flavin mononucleotide binding domain. And I should have stressed that maybe a bit more, that these are these binding domains. But of course, the cofactors are going to come and bind here. So the flavin adenine dinucleotide is going to bind here. The flavin mononucleotide is going to bind here. Uh, so the electrons move down from the NADP to the flavin adenine dinucleotide, to the flavin mononucleotide, and then to the heme group, which will then donate them to the oxygen atom, which has, uh, well, the oxygen molecule, which is uh, bound to that heme group. Okay, uh, now another oxygen molecule will come in, as I've just hinted, and it again uh, will be uh, reduced, basically, by uh, this uh, electron that's arriving uh, from the uh, reduced NADP. Now, what you're going to get formed as the end product of this is you're going to get L-citrulline. Okay? Right, so let me show you all of this. Right, so let me draw out the structure of L-citrulline, and then I will explain where everything's going. Okay, so L-citrulline is another amino acid. Uh, it's not a proteinergic amino acid, so it's not used in proteins, uh, but it has the amino acid structure. So here's the core generic amino acid structure. And then it has a very similar R group to L-arginine. So it has two, three methylene groups, like so. One two, and then here's the third one here. Then it has a nitrogen off that third methylene group here, like so, and then it has a carbon coming off here, and now it still has this amino group coming up here, but instead it's going to have a double bond to oxygen here, instead of um, a, um, instead of this um, nitrogen that was here previously. Now, it is this guanidino nitrogen which is going to form nitric oxide. So, what's going to happen then? What we're going to do is we're going to cleave this bond between um, the carbon and the nitrogen, both bonds. We're going to cleave that double bond, okay? We're then also going to cleave the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen to create um, a hydrogen atom that's free here, and then an oxygen that has uh, a free electron now. What's going to happen is the nitrogen is going to form another bond with that oxygen to make nitric oxide. So we have now have nitrogen double bonded to oxygen. You'll notice that nitrogen doesn't have as many bonds as it should have. So one of the bonds that nitrogen has broken with this carbon will be reformed with the oxygen. That will make the oxygen happy, but uh, nitrogen, nitric oxide the nitrogen in nitric oxide, it still has one free electron remaining from this third bond that broke. So it's actually a free radical. So nitric oxide is a free radical, So meaning that it's got this free electron, basically. And free radicals are extremely reactive chemical species because they don't like having free electrons. Okay, so it's this guanidino nitrogen here that went into the nitric oxide. Right, uh, now... Uh, we're also going to form water. So you remember I told you that we were going to donate a single electron from this uh, reduced NADP. That was going to go to this oxygen. Right, so let's imagine cleaving the, the double bond between the, um, between the two oxygens in this oxygen molecule. Now, one of these electrons is going to go to one of these oxygen atoms, okay? Then all that it needs is a proton to come along from the, uh, from the cytoplasm and bind there, and that will create us um, half of a water molecule. 
Now, what you need is another hydrogen atom, so uh, a proton with an electron, which we get from here. So that's going to create us a water molecule now. So I want to stress, one of these electrons with it, the proton came from the reduced NADP, but again, the proton wasn't going along this chain with the electron. The electron went along the chain. The proton uh, comes from the cytoplasm, so it may not have been the actual proton that was associated with the reduced NADP. Uh, the other hydrogen atom here comes from this um, hydroxyl group that was on the guanidino nitrogen of our ng hydroxy l arginine right okay and then finally this other oxygen atom from the oxygen molecule is then going to form a double bond with this carbon to give us l citrulline so that's the final stage of this reaction uh, where you uh, convert l arginine with two oxygen molecules overall we needed uh, and we needed one and a half elect well we needed three electrons basically from reduced NADP uh, and we created basically uh, L citrulline with two water molecules one from this first second reaction and one from this first reaction and we also created a molecule of nitric oxide so that's how the nitric oxide synthase enzymes work and that's why it's important uh, that you have these chains here because these are what are going to deliver those reducing electrons to the oxygen molecule and in order to actually get this conversion to work you need to reduce those oxygen molecules that's the important thing